How you guys doing today? Great. Okay, ready to be over. Learn about some breakfast cards. Alright, so does anybody know what a breakfast card is? No? Any hands? Anybody? A couple of people? Alright, well a graphics card is basically it's like its own little card that you attach into in a lane or a slot on your motherboard that helps your motherboard and computer as a whole basically be able to produce images and stuff like that. So it basically just does specifically that nothing else. It's all it does is graphics. Now they've done it to where nowadays they've got small ones, so small that they're inside your CPU itself. So you don't even have to have one. But on the older systems, they didn't even have integrated graphics on them. They just had these little bitty cards that you attach in there so that you can actually even see your screen. Uh, nowadays, they just have big ones that they use for uh, games and slightly smaller ones that they use to enhance their video quality better a little bit. And they even use them in supercomputers and servers and stuff like that for artificial intelligence and stuff. They use that to do their super fast uh, processing. Has anybody seen the inside of a graphics card before? So it basically looks like a little motherboard. It's like basically a motherboard. You get your, your chip in the middle right there. And some of them can even have two of them right there. And it's basically like its own little computer because it's got its own RAM, it's got its own chip, it's got its own power. It's got basically everything you need except there's specifically nothing but graphics processing. And then the price wise, they can go anywhere from like 10 bucks all up to thousands of dollars. Like see the one here I got on the on the left here is a is a passive one that you can find on eBay for about 20 bucks. You put it in there and it's got a nice little VGA and a DPI connector that you use to help improve your video screen if you don't have any inboard graphics. And then the one on the right there is the uh, the Red Rocket X. They use it for uh, for 4K and 8K video editings. And that one goes for about ten thousand dollars. And they're pretty expensive and all the camera work and stuff goes with that is pretty expensive too. Uh, different kind of ports they got, they any, anything from uh, analog to digital. You got your composite, component, DVIs, your S video, VGA, mini VGA, HDMI, display ports, and mini display ports. And on the right I got about what it would look like kind of on a couple of different ones on a lower end one and on a higher end. But most days they usually have either display ports or HDMI's, mainly display ports and HDMI's. Some of the uh, the slightly lower end ones will have the DVI's, and if you go even lower end, they got the VGA's. I don't think that they have any components nowadays, but they're all pretty mostly digital. I got a video here. <laughs> showing how graphics cards are made. This is the, uh, the Zotac factory. They make the Zotac 1060.
So does anybody know the, that they test each one individually? I thought that was pretty cool when I figured that out. But in all the different videos I looked at, they all, they all test them individually and they have uh, individual hand testing that they do to make sure each one of them are right. Uh, most of them are powered by an external power supply, PSU. And some of them are even so small, like the uh, passive one I'm showing you, it doesn't even need a power supply. It gets it straight from the uh, slot that you plugged into. They can go all the way up from being powered by the slot to having uh, two eight slots, eight port slots, uh, PCI Express slots there to power it. Uh, like my uh, my GPU, it has two uh, two eight slot, two four slots like that to have eight power ports to power it because it's a pretty hefty one. Anybody want to go out and buy a, car, uh, a GPU now? No. All right, I got another video here. Talk about the PCI lanes. So the other day I was shopping for a state-of-the-art CPU for my gaming and productivity PC when I realized that Intel's latest 5820K and 5930K both have six processing cores with hyper-threading, both have 15 megs of cache, they have a clock speed difference of only 6%, and yet the difference in retail price is around $200. What? Oh, there's the gotcha. The 5820K only has 28 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes. You know, the electrical connections behind the slots that we use for graphics cards and other expansion cards compared to 40 on the 5930K. What a strange way for Intel to differentiate its mid-tier 2011 3 CPU from its entry level one. Corsair Gaming RGB keyboards feature precision Cherry MX RGB key switches for 16.8 million color per key backlighting for virtually unlimited customization. Click now to learn more. Let's start with a brief explanation of what PCI Express or PCIe lanes are and what they're good for. Unlike previous expansion slots like AGP and PCI, PCI Express has a physical size and an electrical operating mode that can be independent from each other. Power is provided by the pins near the key of the connector, and the rest of the connector is used or not used to provide more or less bandwidth to the device that is plugged into it. The more bandwidth, the more lanes are said to be being used for communication. The most common speeds are 1x, 4x, 8x, and 16x. So here's a cool fact. The different bus width cards and slots are actually interoperable. That means that installing a 1x card in a 16x slot is fine, and you can even go the other way around. In this video, I cut out the back of a smaller slot and put a larger card into it. All that happens is that both the slot and the card will now operate at the speed of the lowest link in the chain. So that's what's going to happen if we plug our PCIe 16x graphics card into what appears to be a 16x slot, but if the CPU in our system doesn't have enough PCI Express lanes to provide the full 16 lanes. Your motherboard manual will give you more specifics with a slot-by-slot -slot breakdown of how it's going to work, but basically it'll simply interface with your PC at a lower speed, usually 8x. Well, that sounds horrible, Linus. Won't cutting the link speed to my graphics card in half tank its performance? Not necessarily. We're on the third generation of PCI Express, with each new generation doubling the theoretical <coughs> speed of the previous one. That means a modern Gen 3 PCIe 16x slot can communicate four times faster than an original Gen 1 16x slot. Or another way of thinking about this is that a Gen 3 4x slot is equivalent to a Gen 2 8x or a Gen 1 16x slot. But while we already know that from countless articles that exist on the topic in the past that no previous generation of 8x slot has bottlenecked a then modern high-end graphics card, with X99's positioning as the high-performance platform of choice for enthusiasts and for gamers, I think it's fair to say that folks may be running not just one, but two or even more graphics cards at a time, and this is where concerns start to arise. 
especially given that AMD, and I suspect also NVIDIA, is starting to do more inter-card communication over PCI Express when running in Crossfire, and again, I suspect SLI, versus relying on those dedicated connectors on the top of the cards. So let's introduce the test. All right, so that was our point about the lanes. And I got another one here. How do they work? Does anybody know how a uh, graphics card would work? It makes it different than a CPU? Any ideas? No? I'll show this a little bit. Modern games have amazing okay. graphics, especially on the PC, but not every computer can handle these graphics. Why is that? Well, graphics cards. <clears throat> Obviously, a good graphics card can go a very long way in providing us with extremely high graphic game experiences. But how? What exactly is a GPU, and how exactly is it different from a CPU? Why do we need one? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today GameRinks asks the question, how do graphics cards work? So when new Battlefield games come out, what does everybody talk about immediately? The graphics. Of course the graphics. It's the thing you see first, no matter what. You don't get to see something else and say you've seen the game. Visually, what a game looks like matters a great deal to us. And while I like to talk about art style a lot, there's a lot of technical jargon behind what goes on in order to bring you representations of what's going on in an imaginary world. So to start off, computers. A CPU and a GPU when described, sound pretty similar. A CPU and a GPU both do math. They both solve problems and give you a result that looks entirely different on a screen than it does inside a series of transistors and wires and processors bouncing electrical signals around saying yes or no over and over and over again at incredible rates. So to put it in the most simple possible words, a CPU can do things in a much more linear way than a GPU. A CPU may have a few cores, two, four, eight, however many. The number isn't really relevant, but that's the number of streams of operations that a CPU can do at a time, one per core. Now, it's important that a CPU exists because some things that are very complex need a more dedicated architecture to continue to process those operations. But the way a GPU works, through technologies like CUDA or Compute Unified Device Architecture, which was actually developed by NVIDIA and is therefore not the only technology like this, but the principles that apply to CUDA basically apply to most GPU technology, if not all, is kind of like, and when I say kind of, I mean kind of, like a lot of little CPUs. Now the reason I say kind of and not exactly like is because the cores of a CPU you can all be dedicated towards different problems, whereas all of the sub-cores of CUDA core have to be dedicated to a parallel problem, like, oh, I don't know, graphics. And that's oversimplifying it just a little bit, as graphics are several subroutines. But essentially, a lot of little cores are solving somewhat simpler problems than what a CPU might be used for much faster, because there's lots of them. And what I mean by a simpler problem is like geometry. In all honesty, a geometry problem is really just a few computations. And if you have a ton of cores dedicated to it at once, it's going to get solved very fast. Geometry is just shapes and trajectories and variables that affect placement and angle and things like that. Easier things to do, but when presented with a limited amount of cores would kind of clog up the workflow. Let's say you've got an eight core CPU and you've got a hundred different geometry geometry problems to solve. Well, they each take up a core until you get through the hundred. But imagine if you send the same set of geometry problems to a multi-core graphics card with hundreds of sub-cores, ones that are made for a specific purpose, and that purpose is geometry, to tackle that geometry as fast as it can with a horde of processors. Well, that would be generally looked at as a much more efficient way of doing things, wouldn't it? And that's why a GPU is so much better at red rendering graphics than a CPU. Sure, there's nothing that would stop you from playing a game on a CPU, but there's a reason why the CPU is generally used for things like artificial intelligence, because they're much more complex operations that take a longer period of time to do. When you have a limited number of data streams, you want to be 
using the data streams in the most optimized way. And if you have one type of processor that has a limited amount of cores that are all held up on specific things, you would probably want to throw the more complex singular operations towards that. Whereas if you have geometry oriented problems that can be solved quickly, and oh lordy, you have a lot of those problems, you would probably want to solve those with lots and lots of small cores. And like Jay-Z said, I've got 99 problems, and they're all geometry oriented, and therefore easier to solve by a GPU, so I'd like to send them that direction, and it will handle it much faster than if I sent them towards the CPU. It was a really catchy Jay-Z song. I don't know if you remember it. I do. It was a while back. It's okay if you don't. Now it's important to say that you couldn't just throw anything you wanted at a GPU and do it faster. That's just not true. Complex problems often involve multiple threads of information going on at once. And as I said, on a GPU the problems have to be parallel. Well, if the problem diverts in some way from what one would consider parallel, it's not something that a GPU is going to do very fast at all. The main reason it's so good for graphics is it can do so much of one thing at once. Graphics routines are fairly straightforward and don't go into uncharted territory too often. It's not trying to simulate anything other than fairly straightforward processes. Okay, if I drop an item, it falls. Okay, if wind hits the cloth, it does this. Okay, if you look at the sun, there's a lens flare. That type of stuff. Stuff in which the result is always going to be the same or very similar. And stuff that is going to need to be done a lot. Like where all the vertices are and how many faces are painted in between them. A vertex being a corner on a shape and a face being a surface that's drawn between three vertices that may be smooth or textured or utterly flat, giving that way cool retro look. <laughs> and essentially, now you know what a GPU is and why one uses it and what it does. Granted, this is actually a simple... There you go. Does that bring anything up for anybody else? Make it a little bit simpler, how it works? So basically, overall, what I was saying is basically you use a CPU to do a bunch of more variety, variety of things, and then the GPU is just specifically for graphics process. Does anybody got any questions? So say you have a game laptop that's running about half speed, you could put a, like a, G, a GPU in it, correct? They and have to make it run. They have add-ons that you can add to the side and have an external. But adding an actual, another GPU would. Usually they're, uh, they're soldered onto the board. I mean, there's some of them that aren't, but most of them are soldered on straight to the board so you, you can't change them out. But uh, they do have external bays, but they're just as expensive as the cards. They're like $600. Let's see. Any other questions?